Hey everybody, it's Jason from Frank's Homestead and it is almost archery season here in Idaho and I can't wait. It starts on August 30th, which is Monday. Today is Saturday. I've been waiting all year and I thought I'd just make a video and show that being out on a homestead, living in the forest, in the woods, wherever you may live, to me, hunting is a part of that lifestyle. I know where my meat is gonna come from and it's worth it. It saves me a lot of money in the long run plus i really enjoy it just getting outside even is worth every bit of it even if i don't harvest an animal i'm going to show you what i take when i go elk hunting in idaho and hopefully everything that i'll show you will give you an idea if you've never been bow hunting what you might want to take with you when you go into the field so without wasting any more time let's get right down to it let me show you what i take of course you got to have a reliable bow backpack gloves release some indicator and of course your hunting clothes i get a new hat every year shirts and pants believe it or not I actually buy these at walmart they have a lot of camouflage and this is actually a real tree name brand pattern that's on here and so it's a good fit for where i live it may be different where you are at but for the mountainous regions it blends in it's got darks lights and in between colors that helps you blend into the surrounding. I also have a light duty, light performance jacket. And then as I get closer to winter time, I've got a heavy duty jacket as well. When it comes down to hunting, it really comes down to a few basic things. One, wind. If your scent's going to the animal, you're gonna get busted. Two, sight. If they see you, you're gonna get busted. And three, noise. If they hear you, you could get busted. And then the last thing I get is a good pair of gloves. The style I get, doesn't matter. doesn't have to have a name brand. just got to have a little bit of camouflage to help break up your pattern. Um, I like the Velcro because it helps keep it secure on my hand. This style that I have here actually has a bit of a um, grippy palm to it, which allows for me to keep a good grip on the bow. The, the bow that I have is a PSE Surge model, and this is seven years old and it still works great today as it did back when I first got it. Uh, this is a pretty fast bow, it's over 300 feet per second. My bow is set up with a whisker biscuit, I like that. Um, it's got some string silencers. It's got the old school peep. I know there's new ones out there that don't require having the little cord, rubber cord, but I like it. It's got the metal knock instead of the string. For me, it works great, I use uh, only three pins on my site, and it's a 10, a 20, and a 30 yard on the pins. And uh, the reason I do that is because I hunt in the forest with a lot more brush, and none of my shots have been over 30 yards. Now, as far as your bow goes, you don't have to have top of the line bow to go archery hunting. Unless you've got a lot of money to spend, and you really want to go that route, which is fine, keep it simple. You don't need top of the line on everything. A uh, little story, my, my buddy, he, when we first started archery hunting about 20 some years ago, he actually didn't have a lot of money. And he bought a bow, once again, from Walmart, um, off the shelf, uh, and some generic arrows right off the shelf, and then got some muzzy tips, if I remember correctly. and. He took that into the field. He didn't have it tuned for him. The arrows weren't cut to his length or nothing. He went out that year with me elk hunting and it was cow season as well. I've set him up in a spot that I knew really good, like the back of my hand. Set him up and he shot a cow elk with his bow. It just goes to show you that you don't need all the top equipment to get the job done. Follow your state's rules and regulations on what you are required to have as far as a bow goes such as like in Idaho, you have to have at least 40 pounds or more. Um, and especially if you're going after big game like elk or moose, they recommend you are more up in the 65 pound range uh, just to make sure you have the good penetration power. Now the type of release I use is this style here. It's a pistol grip type. And it slips right over your hand just like, and you grab it just like a pistol. Pew. Well, that's why I call it pistol grip. It may have a different name but that's not real important. I'm not sponsored by anybody or anything in this video. But I picked this up when I first started and I just love it. Uh, it's so comfortable for me 
versus one that just dangles off your wrist or what have you. There's so many different types. And I recommend that when it comes to getting your release, find one, try it out at the store, and see how comfortable it is. And make sure it fits you because that's really important when it comes to shooting. This is a true fire brand release. As far as the arrows go, I am using a carbon arrow. This is a Gold Tip Pro Hunter uh, carbon arrow. And this is a 400 grain arrow. And then the tips, I'm using a Thunderhead 125 grain tip. They shoot straight and I really like them. The arrows I have here, these are my broadheads. But these are used ones where maybe I missed an animal in the field or got an animal and I recovered the tips and I use them for practice tips. I found that when shooting arrows, the field tips that you hunt with versus the practice tips do not fly the same. All right, let's talk about the things I pack in my backpack or on me when I go archery hunting uh, for elk. And we'll start out the first thing, Windicator. Um, so valuable because it tells you which way the wind is going and sometimes early in the morning there's barely a breeze and it's hard to tell which way so just by a little bit of squirt you'll know exactly which way it's going now these aren't very expensive they're only about a dollar or so at the store and once again i got a walmart um and i'm thinking walmart's probably gonna love me for this but anyway uh real cheap reusable you don't have once you run out uh don't go to the store and buy another one here's what i did okay first of all what's in here originally is scent free and that is important and it's very fine powder so what i found as a solution is baking soda any brand of baking soda i buy the cheapest stuff i can find you know 50 cents a bag or 50 cents a box and then i refill these just take the lid off and refill it with that. When I'm not using it because it's open, I make sure it's sealed up in a Ziploc bag so no moisture from the air can get in there and clog it up. But it works really good. It is scent free and uh, does the same job as what originally comes in that Windicator. Let's really get to the meat and potatoes here. This is what I pack in the field in my backpack. This is a Badlands backpack. Um, and the reason I picked this is because it's got a bit of a soft fabric to it, which helps keep the noise down when you're walking through the brush. Um, it's got many pockets and a lot of places to strap stuff. Um, I can put my bow on there and strap it if I need to, etc. Comfortable, very comfortable. Shoulder straps. It's got a strap across the chest to help you keep it on your back. And it's lightweight. It's not real bulky. So I'm going to show you everything that I take into the field with me. First things first is a hydro pack. Any brand will do. This is a three liter. It's not uncommon to walk for many miles in the pursuit of elk. So I always take water. I have a lighter set of gloves if it's really warm. Camouflage cap. I've used it many times getting to and from on the four wheeler. I've got rope. And then on top of that, I have more rope. I have got as much rope as I need and the reason is is because first of all if you are successful in harvesting an elk depending on where it lays it's hard to field dress an elk without rope because you can use this rope to tie a leg tie onto a leg and then maybe over to a tree to help open up its chest cavity area where you're going to work and trying to do that while well, you have a leg on this side and a leg on this side and then field dress is very very hard so plenty of rope this rope here is for doing exactly that and also for when i quarter up my elk then i can tie it to my pack frame side pockets i've got some blazing tape just in case i go into a new area or i shoot an animal but don't harvest it that day i can mark the trail toilet paper not only is it for uh, Call of Duty, but also if I needed to make a fire, I could use this as a source of fuel. I've got a small set of binoculars. Like I said, I don't have a lot of big open area here. So uh, these are just a old, these are probably 15 years old. 
Uh, Simmons is the name brand of this, and it's a 10 by 25 set of binoculars. Headlamp. Simple, cheap headlamp, but invaluable uh, if you harvest, if you shoot something right at dusk and now you're trying to pick up the blood trail because it gets darker than you think, quicker than you think when you're in the woods. Have a heat blanket, just in case, you never know. I've got a compass, just in case. Whistle, I think as far as survival gear, this is one of the more important things to have because it gets really hard to yell if you need help, but this will carry a long ways. I have a little packet here that's got waterproof matches in it. I've got a flint that I can use for starting fires. This heat blanket here I use as a backup just in case something happens to the other one or I just need a, a second layer. I have a little trail first aid kit. Again, as a backup, I have a second whistle because I think you just can't go wrong having that. I've got another flint to make a fire with, second backup and a second backup of waterproof matches. You won't appreciate it until you need it. Then I have a little sharpening stone. It's got a fine and a medium on it. Fines over here, medium over here. And then comes what you actually need to go elk hunting. One knife, two knives, three knives, and a small hatchet. This knife here I use for cutting through the thick slabs of meat. This one's for taking the hide off of the animal. And this one is used for field dressing the animal. It's got a little hook here that helps you cut the center part of the animal um, for field dressing. And then of course I have my little Gerber hatchet. And I use this for splitting the pelvic bone when field dressing an animal, getting it quartered up. But also, uh, of course you can use it if you do get stuck out in the woods, you can use it to chop limbs, chop trees, or what have you to uh, get a fire started. So that way you won't damage your knives. It's very lightweight. It's only about maybe a pound and a half and uh, fits in your pack really well. Well, there you have it. That's what I take in the field with me when I go elk hunting. Uh, it's not a whole lot, but uh, it makes everything easier in life when it comes to harvesting an elk. So other than some basic stuff, all you need now is just a place to go hunting. And I wish you the best of luck in your season.